great to be with you. Lovely to be in the Word again. Maybe this just applies to me, I don't know. But I suspect not. But there are times when I'm not very happy with myself. And uh, this week I had one of those times. I'd really got a bad attitude and I really couldn't shake myself out of it. And uh, what do I do when I get like that? Well, I go to the Word of God. I need some truth in me. And then I can, you know, by the Holy Spirit, apply it. So I want to read to you from 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, some of the words there of this uh, great apostle, um, which really helped me. And I trust that they'll help you because there's some wonderful truth here. So let me just read the scriptures to you. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is short-sighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall and you'll receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. So I'll always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will be able, always be able to remember these things. Peter knows that he's coming to the close of his life. Um, Nero is now on the throne. It's 30 years uh, since the Lord Jesus had gone to the Father and the Spirit had come. And uh, Peter, re Peter reminds those that uh, are going to have to face persecution and, and these ordeals of some wonderful truths which will keep them during this time and actually, and actually help them um, as they add to these truths their faith and all these other uh, wonderful virtues. And so I, I needed to remind myself of these truths earlier this week because we live by truth, because truth is powerful and truth sets us free. So um, here is Peter. He's concerned for the church. And he, and he says to them, you have everything you need for life and godliness. Actually, when you think about Peter, that's not the Peter we know of 30 years before he wrote these, these words. This is the Peter. Peter, this is the mature Peter. The Peter that we tend to identify with is the Peter in the Gospels. And what is he like? Well, he's, he's brash, he's impetuous, he's emotional, he's wonderfully charismatic, he's a, he's a born leader, yet he's totally unpredictable. And we know that right towards uh, the time of Jesus' betrayal and crucifixion, he... Uh, shamefully denies the Lord Jesus um, several times and and then he's, he's just a he's a broken broken man but he he now is 30 years down the track and he and he's a different man he's now a mature apostle of Jesus and and his his, his parting words are reminders so often 
We want new, new things, new ideas, new truths. Give us something new. But he says, no, no, no. I'm not going to give you anything new. You're going to face some tricky times, but I want to give you something that is not new, but it's so foundational uh, to our lives and, and, and how God wants us to live. So he says, God has given us everything in our, in our new birth. What is new birth? Well, in the previous letter um, he wrote, he wrote about new birth as a gift from God. You know, we often think it's when we made a decision to follow Jesus, and there's a sense in which that is true, but, 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 the, but the real truth of the matter is before we could even do that, we were chosen by him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. And he sought us out. Election is, is a difficult doctrine to understand, but we're told to work out our, 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 our calling and election in, the, in this passage of Scripture. Uh, it is just a wonderful thing to realise that God chose us and appointed us to, to live a life that would bear so much fruit for him. So when you get into a situation, I did this week, oh, my attitude was so wrong and I felt so bad about it. I come back to this truth and, and realise, actually, I have resources. And so our new this new birth that God has given us is so, so powerful. And we see that, that, that life, in, in so powerfully displayed in Jesus, in the Gospels. That's why it's good to read the Gospels. Don't just, don't just be reading in the, the epistles. Read the Gospels. See the life that is in Jesus there. This, 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 he is deity. In, he is incarnate. He is in flesh. But we take on divine nature. We, we, don't, we don't take on deity because he is deity. But we have this life in us that was in Jesus. And how did, how did this life express itself? Well, for us, it means that even as he overcame the devil's temptations, so can we. Wow. So <laughs> I was able to change my bad attitude and get myself sorted out. As he walked in obedience to the Father, so can we. We have that life within us. As he was sensitive to the promptings of the, of the Holy Spirit, the words of knowledge that he often had, that woman at the well in Samaria, those words of knowledge, so can we, as we're sensitive to the promptings of the Spirit. We can even do the same works that Jesus did through our new birth and the power of the Spirit. It is so powerful. So we, we have this wonderful gift of salvation which enables us to live the life that God wants us to. And there will be times when, like me earlier this week, you think, oh no, how did I get there? I don't really want, that's not the attitude I want. That's not right, Raylo. That's not good. What I do, I draw on all that God has given me in new birth. And so we're told, make every effort to add to the fruit that God has made available for us. Isn't that wonderful? all these precious promises. And so when we read of Peter in the Gospels, as we will from time to time, yeah, we love this guy. We love this big fisherman. He's just full of, he's full of life. But you know what? That wasn't the life that the Lord Jesus had prepared for him. It was a, it was a mature life. He didn't stop being Peter, no more than you'll stop being you. But he came to this place of maturity so now, as he knows, his life is coming to an end. In fact, he, were, he was crucified in Rome under Nero. But his thoughts are now not for himself, they're for the church. Oh, yeah. And he wants them to be able to press on as he is doing. And so he reminds them 
of this wonderful truth. I hope that's been helpful. By the way, that's one of my daughters just popped in as I'm doing this. And uh, so I hope that enables you to uh, live, live the life that's, that's worthy of Jesus uh, this week. Thanks for listening again. We'll see you again soon. Bye.